Hey everyone, Attic here and today we are talking about mistakes beginners usually make with their drones and believe me, these come from experience. So let's go. Now one of the best pieces of advice I can give and the first thing I say to anyone who gets a new drone is practice. Even though I have been flying for the last four or five years, each time I get a new drone, I still always take it out to my local park or fields, wherever there is some open space where I won't lose sight of my drone easily and where I can't crash into things easily. I do this because with every new drone, companies like DJI learn from previous iterations and are likely to tweak settings which I may not be used to. For example, with the Mini 3 Pro, I realized straight away that the RC joysticks were a lot more looser and would move my drone more than with the same amount of pressure when I had my Mini 2. So if I had taken it out to a more challenging environment and started flying, say, I could have easily crashed into trees or bushes. Because remember, there are no side sensors on this drone. So always, always start by getting yourself used to the controls and the movements of the drone in every mode, which on the DJI Mini 3 Pro means practicing in cine mode, normal mode, and sports mode. I know your brain will be telling you, go get those epic shots you see on YouTube. That's why you bought the drone. But trust me, ask any seasoned flyer and they will tell you practice, practice, practice. This will give you the best start to how the drone handles instructions and how far you should push for it to go where you want it to. Giving you the best control when you are ready for those epic shots in the end. Another mistake people make is to simply fly in the same spots over and over, ending up with pretty much the same shots. Now, for any kind of filming, you need a variety. You can make the same location look amazing and interesting by using varied shots. Having a drone gives us a unique opportunity not granted to other types of filmmaking. Unrestricted height. Now, obviously, please check your local laws as here in the UK, our unrestricted height is 120 meters. But that is plenty to get some very creative shots. This here is Dunstable Downs, a very plain, if pretty, location for a shoot. But using shots from different angles, you can give the viewer things they were not able to see from their perspective. Take shots from as high as possible in, in bird's eye view for intriguing scenes. Or go as low as possible and speed through to give, to give them an adrenaline rush. Take calm panoramic shots from different heights to give viewers an idea of the landscape. Have slow, calm shots of the skyline using the upward rotation of the gimbal. Give them a different option and something they haven't seen. Silly? Yes. Have I done it? Absolutely. I can't tell you how often this used to happen to me. I used to get excited about flying whenever we planned to go somewhere, forget to check my battery levels and then realise once I got there that I only have one half full battery and that will only give me a few minutes in the air. It's not a nice feeling and one that can be so easily avoided. Also remember, DJI has set their batteries to slowly discharge over time if not used for long periods. So even if you fully charge them and keep them ready, they may have depleted by the time you actually go anywhere. So always check before you leave. And if possible, get a car charger or a power bank to top up while you're on your journey. It will save you a lot of heartache and self scolding. Following on from point number three, we have another facepalm mistake that really grinds my nerve. I've had my fair share of getting to locations, proud of myself for remembering to charge the batteries to full just before leaving and having all the bits I need, to then realize I've either left my SD card in the computer from the last time I filmed and transferred the files, or I forgot to transfer the files and have little to no space left on the actual SD. But this doesn't just apply to drones, but to pretty much all filming. But uh, I still feel sad when I think about the time I went to the Lake District and forgot my memory card. And as it was a bank holiday and we were staying in a remote area, I couldn't even buy one while we were there. And I had to sit through the whole time wondering what kind of magical shots I could have been getting. This one is very important and not only because it is a law in most, if not all countries. Even if it were not a law, I would still highly suggest it, especially for beginners because it keeps the drone more in your control. Take special care when you're recording because I know how hard it is to pull your eyes away from the scene, assessing your shot to look at the drone moving slowly in any given direction. 
but let me tell you from experience that sometimes it may seem like the drone is flying straight but in reality there is a slight angle or a slight deviation of the course and it could well be heading for a tree. As you become more experienced you'll start to do these things more naturally but at first you have to make them into habits. You have to force your brain to learn to keep your eye on the drone not the screen. Of course you can always glance away making sure your composition is good or the exposure etc is good but please try to keep the drone within sight. Not, not only is it law like I've said but it can also be dangerous and if you crash the drone in an awkward place you may not have a drone left. So there you have it. Five mistakes beginners usually make when starting out with drones. Comment below if you have made any of these mistakes. Um, I've made pretty much all of them. And if you're considering getting the Mini 3 Pro, have a look at this next video where I go through my top features. And if you're contemplating which remote to pick, watch this comparison. And until next time, stay safe, stay creative.